everyone, welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome here to the UEFA Champions League. This is the very pinnacle of club football and this is the competition where Barca have everything to prove. In recent years, we've underperformed, we have disappointed, but this season, we arrive with renewed faith. We arrive with a steely determination to put things right and today we're going to be discussing what lies ahead of us here and starting with the big opener on Tuesday against Antwerp. It is all coming up. Get yourselves ready because the Champions League season, it starts right here. Now to kick off the Champions League in the kind of style that we're looking for, today's video is coming to you guys courtesy of Manscaped who are at the pinnacle of men's grooming products and they're going to help you arrive looking and feeling your best for the very best competition because earlier on this month I actually managed to try out their Manscaped beard head jacket and I could not recommend this enough. Genuinely, there is everything that you will need in there to keep you looking very fresh, very trim, if that's the kind of look that you want to go for but is also the handyman as well i tried this one out and this is the perfect little beard trimmer because it's in travel form you know if you're going away if you're often on the move you know trying to pack light that's not an easy thing to do you want something small and compact and sleek the handyman is absolutely perfect for you wherever you're going throw this in your case or your backpack and you will be sorted and don't forget guys with manscape right now whichever product you're looking at and they've got so many you can get 20% off your order with the code TALKFCB. Simply tap that in at checkout and your discount is secured. So head on over now to manscaped.com, have a look around and I'm sure that you won't be disappointed. Thanks to all of you guys for the great support. But okay guys, it is safe to say that heading into this season's Champions League, when it comes to Barca right now, it's strange but we're feeling good, which given our labouring start to the season, unconvincing at times, and also given our past struggles in this competition recently, maybe that would be a little bit of a shock. But you know what? Saturday, it changed everything. Genuinely, that performance against Real Betis, the goals that we scored, the football that we played, and the way that everything just came together perfectly there with the new signings, it's changed the whole mood. It's changed the whole feeling surrounding the club. And the key for us now is to keep that going. But of course, guys, even after such a fantastic display as we saw on Saturday, there will be plenty of people, and I've heard many of them already, a lot of them from outside of the club saying, well, you can't celebrate just one game. You know, I know that it was a good display, but Barca fans here are going way, way overboard. You can't be too happy about that. It's just the one match. And I think that's another thing, guys, in all honesty. I've been talking recently about modern football, some of the changes that we're seeing, and this is something that I often see other fans fans ultimately telling you and deciding when you can be happy. You know, they're deciding if we're allowed to be happy about our own team's game. I mean, how does that work? What is with that in the modern game right now? If we want to be happy about something, we're going to be happy about it. We've waited a long time to see the kind of football that we did against Betis. We've had a difficult summer. We've had a tricky start to the season. And I believe every single one of us right here, we are well within our rights to get a bit excited about our game, to get a bit excited about this Barcelona team right now. Because at times in football these days, you've got to live in the moment. You've got to enjoy it. You've got to smile. That is what we want to do. But of course, guys, make no mistake here. I want us to back that up because I want us to show all of those people, you know what? It's not just one game. This is Barca now. And we've got to go on to the next game and the next and the next and show what we can do. And look at the fixtures that we've got here to come through against Betis. We've now got Antwerp, new to the Champions League, of course they are. Then Celta at the weekend who are really struggling. And all three of these games coming at home, all of them in a row. And after the atmosphere, the great turnout that we saw at the Olympic Stadium on Saturday. I'm really excited about these games. These are a good run of fixtures to build momentum and ultimately get confidence really firing. Because indeed, guys, turning our attention here solely to the Champions League and onto our opponents on Tuesday, it is, of course, Royal Antwerp who will be travelling to Barcelona. They are based in Belgium and they will be making their official debut in the Champions League group stage this season. They're newcomers. They're in unfamiliar territory right now. 
now, but they are coached by a very familiar face in the shape of Mark Van Bommel. He actually won the Champions League at Barca as a player back in 2006, and it would be nice to see him reunited with Xavi on the touchline. But I think there's one player within Royal Antwerp there to keep a very, very close eye on. That would be the midfielder, Arthur Vermeeren. He's 18 years old, and he is incredibly talented there. Very, very highly rated player, and he's reportedly been scouted, actually, by Barca on multiple occasions so far in his young career. And I thought it was actually quite funny. A few days ago, Van Bommel was asked about whether Xavi had asked him for any information about Vermeer and the kind of player that he could become. And Van Bommel actually said, I wouldn't give Xavi any information on him simply because then he would go out and buy him immediately. So it's going to be intriguing to see how Vermeer performs on the biggest stage of all. But I actually thought that quote was funny in a number of ways because honestly these days guys let's get it clear Barca can't really go out we're not allowed to go out and just buy anybody we can't look at a player and think oh he's brilliant he's talented we want to sign him and go and get him because of La Liga and this is a crazy crazy stat that I'm about to give you of all the teams in the Champions League this season all 32 of them in the group stage Barcelona FC Barcelona have spent the least amount of money that is unbelievable there just 3.5 million euros we know that we spent this summer on Oriol Romeo and even Antwerp. Well, like I say, they're here for the first time ever. They've spent 10 million and it just goes to show you how ludicrous, how utterly ludicrous La Liga's restrictions are. Because on that note, guys, I wanted to speak quickly again about these restrictions, about Javier Tebas, because I wanted to do this actually on Friday before I got sick. But I really didn't want to leave this unsaid because I want to talk here about Jao Felix because I was absolutely staggered by the words that came out of Javier Tebas. Tebas's mouth just last week, a few days ago now, about Jao Felix and his signing for Barca, when asked there about his salary and how that contributes to Barca's wage cap in the league. Because he said there about Jao Felix's salary, it's one thing what Barca pay him, but it's another thing about how that is calculated in their salary limit. Because Tebas said it said that 400,000 is the yearly salary of Jao Felix, which it is, but Tebas said we value that contract at much more. Barcelona pays him a salary that's lower than our assessment. And I cannot believe this right now because apparently La Liga, they value Jao Felix's contract there in the salary limit at Barca at 7 million instead of the 400k we're paying him. And I cannot believe that because even when we're doing the good work now, even when we're bringing down wages, even when we're convincing players to play for much less than what they're actually worth, La Liga are over there saying, oh, well, that's great. Good job to you. Those are good figures. But we're going to decide on different ones. We are ultimately going to cut with a number, whatever comes into our head, and we're going to apply it to your salary cap. That is absolute nonsense there. What we are paying Jao Felix are his wages at Barca. It is really that simple. And have La Liga done this with any other club, I wonder? I really, really do. And that is why, guys, no matter what right now, we have to battle. We have to fight with everything we have this season. The incredible squad that we have, that we've managed to assemble, we've got to use that here to put people like Tebas in their place to show them that no matter what they do no matter how hard they try it will not be enough to bring us down. Which brings us on, guys, to the all important starting lineup there, looking at Tuesday's game and the big decision that Chaffee has to make because he's spoken already about the depth of this team right now, the sheer number of options that Chaffee has at his disposal. And that makes games like this very interesting to see who's going to get the nod, who is going to get their chance in the team. Now, the question that I would ask straight away is how many changes, if any, would you make to the team that beat Real Betis? Because we said in that game every single player was out. Standing. You couldn't fault anybody, but do you make any changes to that lineup there? Because I think early on in the season here, Chavi, he's going to want to make everybody feel important. He's not really going to want to isolate players and make them feel as though they're second choice this early. We know we've got a lot of games. We know that this game should be a good one for us. We know the game on Saturday against Celta should be a good one as well. So there's opportunities here to give players chances in the team. Now you're looking at Ronald Araujo right now. The big news about him is that he returned to full training this morning. Great 
great to see him back there. Fantastic news. When you think about adding him to the team that we already have and that we saw on Saturday, that is really, really exciting news. But I think with Araujo, you wouldn't be in a rush to play him, would you? You wouldn't be rushing him back here in time for this game, simply because I don't really think there's any need to. We've got a lot of options at centre-back. Let him recover. Let him have a few more days in training before calling upon him. Maybe at the weekend would be more suitable. But I do wonder there, will there be a change at centre-back? I'm looking at Andreas Christensen. We know that he's had his injury struggles at times. He wouldn't want to put too much of a burden on him. And could there be a potential start there? First start in the team in the Champions League for Inigo Martinez alongside Jules Kunde, would you be happy with that centre-back partnership there? I think there's also been a lot of questions out on the right-hand side too. Has Ferran Torres done enough to keep his place? I thought we had a good game against Betis, but the problem for him is that Rafinha came on and scored, and also before that, of course, in the game previously, Laminia Mal had been extraordinary, so that right-wing role, that is going to be so, so key there. Will Xavi go for Ferran, for Rafinha, for Laminia Mal? Who would you opt for on the right side? And the one other player as well that I would mention would be Ilkay Gundogan. He's been brought in here to play the big games, to play the big Champions League games and I would expect him maybe to come back into that midfield but again the question is who would go out then? You know, Frankie was so good. Romeo has been so consistent. And Gaffey was really all action, all energy against Betis. So if Gundogan wants to come back in, who would you sacrifice? But all that I will say right here, and all that I would absolutely insist on, is that we stick with those three forwards, no matter what here. Lewandowski had a brilliant game against Betis. He loves the Champions League. Whoever you want to play on the right. And of course, Zhao Felix in amongst it all. Let's see him start again. And Jao Cancelo. I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think this team right now it is really, really going for games. It is motivated to the absolute maximum. And let's go into this and give it everything. Which means right now, guys, that with the Champions League just around the corner, what I want to know from you is what you're predicting here. You can see that there's a lot of confidence, there's a lot of feelings here that Barca are going to win again by several goals. Will it be three? Will it be four? Will it be five again? But let's win this game. Let's win it well. Let's put down an early marker. I hope that we can see us win by a several goal margin just to show that we're here. We're ready for this competition now. We are ready to save Send out a statement. So please let me know in the comments down below your score prediction and also your team prediction in terms of the lineup. I will see you after it for all of the reaction from the Champions League. I'll catch you soon, guys. Thank you indeed for watching. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Barca.